Uh, do you remember the first time you met uh, Pavel? I remember the first time I met Pavel. I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And Pavel, Pavel is uh, older than me. We were going to the um, same music camp. Finland is full of music camps in the summertime for classical students, you know, to make master classes mm -hmm. with great teachers. An intensive period of like two weeks, you know, going to small villages and, you know, all over the Finland or all around the Finland people come there. And that was the first time. I, 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 I don't know why. Uh, actually, actually we've, we met maybe even. I don't, I don't remember ex exactly where we met first time. Because we met sometime in, in one chamber music festival and another time we studied together. But for some reason, even he's seven years older than me. I was 13 and he was 20. We bonded very well. And he always uh, treated me as a, like an equal. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that, was, that was, so our friendship started immediately, even we had this kind of uh, age difference. Right. Well, was it something uh, you needed when, like, uh, like um, confirmation that you're doing the right thing in terms of music from somebody who's older? <clears throat> I don't know. We we didn't so much think about music, or or on that time. Okay. You know, I think it's more like spending time together and talk about music in general. And yeah, but of course it's it's very important when you when you play a concert when you're a teenager. Mm -hmm. It's very important if. You know, little couraging from right. from 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 a person who you think is more professional, and you know you think that it's on a different level. It's 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 very important. I think it it ends up uh, uh, to the same thing on, on everything what you do. You need uh, positive um, feedback on of your work. If you are doing interviews, you mm. you need somebody to tell you sometime, hey, you are doing it really well. Right. So. It, it, it's the same kind of thing, because then you get a good feeling and it lifts you up and it, it, uh, it, it uh, helps you to make things better and develop things. How then, um, because then the other two guys also joined, uh, how did the, <coughs> the Metallica thing start? Was it just <coughs> playing a couple of songs and somebody heard it and then you made an album? Actually it started in 93, we, we played in the orchestra together and, um, and there, we, there was always in the summer camp of the orchestra and there was always an e event evening um, where people just created whatever program and that was the point of we thought okay that was a good spot let's do a couple of Metallica songs I think we played three Metallica songs and they were all from Ride the Lightning album because the mm -hmm. funny thing was that I had money to buy only one one book of, of Metallica mu music you know right. <laughs> you know this guitar mm -hmm. tabletters and and that was Ride the Lightning <laughs> uh, because I thought that um, that album had most of songs that we could maybe maybe we, we would be able to play. Mm -hmm. So I did arrangements of Escape, For Whom the Bell Tolls and Creeping Death. And then we performed those acoustically okay. to, to our friends, basically. And <coughs> since then... Was that the first time that, that you very performed first, That was the very first time. Uh, well, 93, August 93. And, and, and people just loved it and it was so much fun. So later on, we played maybe tw two times a year on Civilis Academy student parties, like a pre-Christmas party or whatever. And then we played um, with, um, actually those times we were just three of us, I think. And no, we were four of us, uh, with Andro, uh, Max, Pavo and I. And, um, and people always loved it. We, we took already uh, amplification, some kind of microphones and a little bit distortion and you know, uh, played uh, even Sepultura right. uh, on those times, and <clears throat> I think the rumor just went on. So end of '95, we were invited to play uh, to a metal club. There was an event, Christmas event, like uh, between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what is it called? It was like I, I can't translate the name anyway. Mm -hmm. But there was uh, four bands all playing covers. We played uh, Metallica songs for 25 minutes, and uh, other band played type uh, actually him played one of their okay. first performances in the same event. Okay. Uh, they played Typo Negative and then was two other uh, Helsinki underground metal mm -hmm. bands played Danzig and uh, Raging and Machine. And that was the event. We, we opened the evening uh, like a thousand capacity club, like Melkweg size. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people freaked out. It was stage diving and everything. And, and one week after that, one guy 
uh, call, uh, from a small, very small label. He called us and he wanted to meet us. And then he, he just made a question that, okay, <coughs> I, I understand nothing about cello player playing. Are you good cello players? I was like, yeah, we're fucking good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he was like, okay, would you like to make an album? They were like, no, you must be kidding us. Nobody wants to listen to this from album. No, 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 I'm serious. And let's make a record, full uh, metallic record. I said, okay, let's try. Let's give it a try. Okay. So it was very, uh, mm -hmm. everything happened very accidentally mm -hmm. and absolutely nothing was planned. And well, you know, when we released the first album, we thought, okay, we, we, we liked the album, yeah? Mm -hmm. We thought, oh, it's great. And, and we thought if we sell 500 to 1,000 copies, and we, if we get a couple of more gigs, that would be fun to do. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's something that was our dream. Right. <laughs> and something else started to happen then. Well, what was it like then? Because you, was there any ambition to play before you got that record deal to, to uh, become a band and tour? Or? No, it was more like just for a special event because we love okay, to do that. Okay. So we just, you know, whenever we had the possibility, we performed. But we never thought it so much as a band because, <clears throat> because the lineup was changing a little bit. Who, mm -hmm. who of us, we, we were always a big bunch of cellists. Who of us were around, you know, right. they joined. Sometimes we were three, sometimes four cellists, sometimes. Perpu actually played, who is in the band now. Played in that particular concert where we got the record deal. Okay. He was replacing Pavo because Pavo was king in Lapland. <laughs> but that, that time Perpu was just 16 years old and, and he had very promising uh, classical career. And uh, <clears throat> he was kind of shaky. <laughs> okay. On that time, and we thought, okay, we don't want to be responsible of ruining his classical mm. career, so we, we didn't take him into the oh. band because we, on, on that time. But that changed four years later. Mm. Well, the gradually, gradually it has become <coughs> more... Um, <coughs> you started writing more your own uh, music, first, uh, first album covers and second album, mostly covers, I think, yeah. and then gradually your own material. Yeah. What was it like com starting to compose, or did you already compose your own music? No, I never wrote music before Apocalyptica. Harmageddon is the first song I ever wrote. Okay. <laughs> how, how did it happen? Uh, it happened because we, we did a Christmas single in 96, and we made a version of Little Drummer Boy. And I, I, when I did the arrangement, I wrote a lot of new stuff, which was not in the original song. And that was the starting point. I started to think, okay, what about if I... I how would it feel to write an own song? Mm -hmm. And after that, on the same, uh, same year Christmas holiday, I wrote this Harmageddon. And, uh, and I think after Inquisition Symphony, when we did the two cover albums, we just found, okay, now it's time to start to develop the band. You, you know, to find the real identity for us. Right. You know, playing covers, it's, it's, you don't have an identity, mm -hmm. really. You know, it's like you play the music, but it's not real, really in band, the yeah. band, um, on terms of making your own kind of music. And it was, for us, it was only possible step and only interesting direction. We didn't want to be like, you know, cover band, touring, mm. touring. It was fun, but, you know, we wanted something more. And I felt it's the only way is to write own music. Okay. So it was, on those terms, it was not tough. But it was very difficult because our record company didn't want us to change. Okay. And, and we had to fight. So when we were doing cult record, the boss of, uh, of that time, fin Finnish Polygram, called me, tried to all the time reach me, hey, come on, guys, now stop it, stop it. They postponed the studio, and I called the studio, that hey, whatever the fuckers call you, we come to the studio because we make this album, mm -hmm. no matter what, you know. And, okay. it was, and you can kind of you can hear it from the cult album that it is, it's a really album with no compromise. So just it, it's really like, mm. it's like, we were so strong with the band, like, now we battle our way out of this. And, uh, and something of that attitude is really on the record. Okay. So this is basically <coughs> you against the record label at one It was kind of, yeah. 